Hello gorgeous Aries, welcome to my channel and Happy New Year and this is your love horoscope for January 2018. My name is Bella and most people know me as Bella the Secret Psychic and how I do all of my readings is with the help of my spirit guides. So it's them kind of really giving the overall things, things for you to be considering when it comes to your love life as we start the new year. So just before I crack on and, and in, in with the reading, if you'd like to know more about me and my services or get a private reading, please just look at the links just down below. All my readings start from as little as 4 99 and you can catch me on my Insco chat or you can get a mini video or a live Skype reading with me too. And please do like, subscribe and share. So let's crack on, shall we, what, what it is that my guides want to let you know when it comes to your love life. For January, January, January. Gosh, a new year. <clears throat> so my guides are saying, this time last year, so January 2017, you guys were in a hard place. You had to make big decisions. It wasn't the funnest time to start your year. And you start this year reflecting on how far you've come. And my guides are using this saying, they're saying, God gave us memory so that we might have roses in December. I'm sure that's by somebody famous. Um, and what they mean by that is sometimes we can have, we need to have that reflection to want to know how far we've come and how things are different, but also so that we can remember how to plant roses. You know, if we never had the memory to, to kind of, you know, sow seeds, you know, we wouldn't even exist as human beings because we wouldn't know how to farm. And so there's an element of understanding that actually, despite this time last year being much more of a colder experience for you and you starting out of it feeling a bit like, you know, you've had a baptism of fire or something, that actually you come to a place where you can see how you could turn your whole world around and so that you could bring roses. You know, for some of you in the, who are in the Northern Hemisphere watching this, that will be literal, they're like growing roses out of the cold, out of the snow. So you, you, there's a lot of you admiring your strength and seeing why you had that journey and how it's changed you in such a profound way and how you're really grateful as you start 2018, not the same way. You're not starting it miserable. You're starting it bright eyed. You're starting it understanding how much strength you have within you, that you've overcome so many things and that you can grow roses, basically. That's a beautiful analogy, basically. So my guides are saying there, with that in mind, the one thing that you're being shown is that you, want to do things this year in partnerships where you have complete and honest complete and utter honesty in your heart and authenticity that you want to be your true truthful self with the highs and the lows and you want to be with somebody who actually also represents the same for you and so if you're in a committed relationship which i feel like some of you will be you will be having this real like you want, like I get here that you want this year to be special. So you want to commit to that person. And you want a commitment out of them. And you want to do it. You want to have that conversation straight away. Because you're like, if you're not in the same good place that I'm in, where I feel really strong with or without you, but I'd rather be with you, then I'd rather know now so that I can make decisions that is best for me in 2018. And I get here you have this kind of truthful, frankful conversation where you're looking for authenticity. You're not looking for someone to sort of not be on the same page as you, no deceit, anything like that. I get for most of you it works out quite well. It's about creating family. It's about creating commitment. So I get for you, some of you, it's like, I want to get married this year. Are you on the same page? I want to have a baby this year. Do you want it too? I, you know, like, I want to move in with you. Do you want it too? You're having very big, frank conversations. I want to buy a car. Are you in it too? Do you see what I mean? Big conversations about big things. Now, I want to move to another country. Are you coming with me? Big questions, all right? Because you're looking for someone to be on the same page as you, going the same direction, so on and so forth. And that will even include if you're single and you start to date in January, which is a great time to date, by the way, because most people are in the mindset of wanting to kind of start that process that, that in that new year. So it's a good time to meet people, but you'll be answering people very direct questions about what, what, what it is they want. Are they looking for a casual, casual? Are they looking for something that is committed? If it meets you, if they're on the same page as you, then it's all happy days. 
And I think you'll be successful because I think we've, we've grown out of a day and age where people are, are less direct than they was. It means that by you being direct means you can weed out people that don't meet your authentic, authentic standards. Does that make sense? And then <laughs> because you've got the red light or the green light, I should say, to kind of go, go, go with the person of your choice, it works out, you know, if in the, in the second week, I get here, you're making plans. So if some of you, particularly around babies and, and family and expanding on that or moving, then actually you start to put that into action, you start processing and putting that forward. So you feel like it's not just pie in the sky, because there's a real element of you guys that you don't want to be seen as procrastinating. You want to be doing, and you don't want to be the person that you're with, giving you a lot of hot air and then not backing it up. So you're like, right, great, you're on board with me, let's do it. And so well, I get you both doing this together, building bridges, you know, making the moves, making the decisions, planning a wedding, planning a baby, whatever this is, you're starting to put it into action straight away. Now, the thing is, I think there's some of you that may come across as a little bit bullish because you're like, go, 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 go. And the other person's like, yeah, I said yes, but hold on, let's slow down a little bit. And you're like, no, you said this. So there will be in the third week a little bit of challenging from your energy about what people told you they were and weren't going to do. And it's not because they're not doing it. They're just not going at the fast pace that you seem to be going at. But actually, I think, again, that dialogue and to continue to have that dialogue is super important because, again, you don't want to be procrastinating. You want to make sure that things are going along. It's like for the first time you have this plan and you'd like to kind of steer the ship on it a little bit and make it kind of go your way, basically, which is a positive. They agree. <laughs> In fact, they may even let you take over the ship a little bit. You know, so for example, if you're getting married, maybe it's you that's planning the wedding more than the other person. That's okay. You know, they're, they're on board. They're just, you know, not as on board as you. It's fine. You take you take care of the reins. <laughs> Do you see what I mean? It goes a lot more better. There's a bit more of an understanding between the pair of you. Um, again, if you're single, you'll be you'll be having these kind of dynamics with the new person that you're meeting. If not, you won't be you won't be aligning yourself to them it just won't be in your energy you've got this kind of strength that's running through you to again try to build these roses that you want for yourself you know so as you kind of then get to kind of the end of the month you get to kind of the fourth week I'm just shown here that basically and, and I've seen this a, a, a bit with Sagittarius I think it was at the end of the month you're so kind of happy because things are things have been done that are that you that you can basically see the plan that you have for the rest of the year with this connection like it's all been sorted out a little bit now obviously plans don't always go 100 percent, but from your point of view you feel a sense of certainty basically that you have some positive key things to look forward to in your year that are very representative of the relationship that you're in and the relationship that you want going forward which you can't say better than that really can you <laughs> So it's a really good start, Aries, to your year in terms of you being a real driving force to your own happiness. Like keep that. And I, I can't see any of you kind of failing from that because the contrast and how and how you figure out how, how much strength you have, that fire that burns in all areas, how you kind of take it and run with it because you don't want to be that weak person that somebody else put you in the beginning of this time last year. So the contrast is, 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 is it's, it's powerful, Aries, like super powerful, it's wonderful. So I do hope that that's helped to give you some insight and some guidance as you guide your own ships in January. I don't think you need that much help at all, if I'm being honest with you. You've got a lot of power in your energy in, in, um, in January. So please use it to support you in all the efforts that you're doing. Again, I do love to hear from all of you, so do like, do comment, do share, and do, do subscribe and join me here again next month where I give you uh, an update on your love life when it comes to February. So take care, everybody. I've been better. Bye-bye.